Hey guys, Kev here, and today is Ferrum Forge Day on the Lefty EDC channel. So, I am doing my reviews on both the uh, ProTech Ferrum Forge Drop ProTech Mordax button lock here, and then I'll also be doing my Ferrum Forge uh, Wii slash Civivi made Stinger review right after it. So, um, keep your eyes peeled for that one coming. I do have a Dock Street Bohemian Pilsner here, guys. My favorite beer, of course. And you know, something I was thinking about today was maybe I should, at the beginning of every review, Dan, that was a shitty pour. Uh, the beginning of every video, maybe I should do it like, what did I carry today kind of thing, right? And uh, I carried this today, guys. This is the CKF Evo 2.0 Custom Knife Factory, Evo 2.0 Rotten Designs Design. John Sorensen is behind it. Um, I just posted my review on it today. This thing is just amazing. Um, it's literally my favorite knife, and it's just one of the best I've ever hand, excuse me, handled. CKF did a good job with this one. Uh, but anyway, that's what I carried today, along with the Mordex. So let's jump into it, guys. I got this knife basically because I love the Malibu. Um, I always wanted to try this, but I thought it was maybe a little big and a little expensive. Um, so I never did. Um, and then I think Jake got one, Bearded Gear got one that's like blacked out from his wife, aka he picked it out uh, and she paid for it. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'd give it a shot finally. You know, they sell them on Amazon now, but they were out of stock. So I went on Swap, and there happened to be one, and I got this for $215 on Knife Swap. So I'm pretty happy with that price. Um, and since then, I've carried it a bunch. Uh, I, I do like the knife a lot. Um, we'll get to, you know, my kind of thoughts on it. It's not my favorite knife of all time or anything, but it is very, very good. Um, I did put bearings in it, so this does have skiffs, I believe. Either skiffs or gillians. Um, five millimeter, one sixteenth bearings. You can see my disassembly video, and you can definitely uh, see how I installed that if you want to do it, if you're curious. Um, it's not that difficult. The only real issue to contend with is the button. And I think I also used the wrong Torx. So I was, I used T6, I believe, or T8. I can't remember. You got to watch the video on the pivot. I think it was T8 and then T6 on the clip. But somebody told me that ProTech actually uses hex. So it just so happened that my bits fit and worked because there wasn't like a ton of Loctite or anything. But if there had been a ton of Loctite, I probably would have stripped something. So just make sure you know which bits you're using properly. Um, don't listen to an idiot like me, right? All right, so let's get this party started. Aesthetics. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Ferrum Forge aesthetics. Um, they usually involve a nice drop point blade. Uh, uh, kind of flat on the back here, straight handle down to kind of like a strider type deal. Um, and then you have just a slight curve here and then ferrum forge style, you get choils. And on this one, you get a nice big choil here and then your four finger choil right here on the blade. Um, and again, you have this drop point blade. Uh, it is 20 CV steel, aluminum handle construction on this guy, 20 CV pro tech. All right. That's it for uh, branding of any kind on the blade. I mean, it is kind of large on there, ProTech. Oh, sorry, Drop, of course. Um, I should mention that. This knife is a collaboration between Ferrum Forge, Drop.com, and then ProTech made it. Um, <laughs> for some reason, when I first heard of this knife, I always used to add Wii in there, like Wii knives had a part in it. But I don't, they make a lot of Ferrum Forge knives. So I think I just thought. They somehow were involved, but it's a uh, Ferrum Forge Drop ProTech Mordax, all right? Um, and there actually is an FF design right here. 
there's a little indent or whatever you want to call that on the handle there. Um, so that actually, there is a little more branding. So they all got their piece of the pie, right? Um, but yeah, aesthetically, I think it's a good looking knife. I like it. Um, uh, I think it's sexy. Uh, I went with black cause that was obviously the option I had on knife swap. If I would have bought one, like I tried, I would have went with uh, blue, I think to match my, to match my Malibu. Uh, I love this Malibu guys. And uh, if you want to know, like head to head, the Malibu blows this thing out of the water. I mean, this is good, but this thing is incredible. Um, so just so you know, but everybody knows the Malibu is the shit, right? The Malibu. Um, but yeah, aesthetics are good on it. There's nothing like glaringly ugly or, um, you know, silly about it. I think it's just a good looking knife, right? Fair and Forge does a good job with that, so... Ergonomics, if I hold it back here, it's very comfortable. This choil is generous, and then the rest of my fingers land down on the flat there, and it is extremely comfortable. There's no jimping. Um, there is this kind of like swedge at the top of the blade, I guess you call it, and it's on both sides, and it almost gives it like a crown spine feel. It's not crowned. <laughs> But it has that feel. It's it's very interesting. I like it. I, I like that design um, aesthetic there. Um, also, this is a stone wash blade, if I didn't mention that. So ergonomics, good back here. Now, I don't do the reverse grip shit, but you do have this kind of strider thing right here. So you can hold it like this, and you could get into a knife fight, because everybody does that. Boom. Just like Friday night knife fights, right? Boom. At the gas station. Um uh, you know, we could, uh, we go to the gas station, get a Slurpee from Joe, and we can, uh, do some knife fights. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, so once you get up to this choil here is where things get interesting. So I love a choil, guys. You know that. I'm a big fan of a choil. And this is a great way to hold your knife. I, I have plenty of room. I have tons of control. My hands, my thumb goes up the blade, right? But... This choil is not comfortable. There, there's something about it. Like the edge, first off, comes all the way back. So you're right there, right? And it is sharpened. And then with the flipper tab, it just feels sharp. Like it feels like something's trying to bite me. And I'm pretty sure it's this right here. And then it also feels thin. Like it feels like it's trying to cut me. Uh, so I just don't like this choil that much. I'm usually a big fan of choils, um, and Ferrum Forge usually does a great job. Here is, a, I have this loner Archbishop here, by the way. This thing is fantastic. It's a lefty Archbishop. This is one of their earlier collaborations with Wii. Um, and this choil is extremely comfortable. Uh, and it looks the same, right? Like, it's super weird how they're very similar choils. But it must just be the slightest bit bigger or something. Yeah. Let's see. Line it up. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, it's like this much bigger. But that difference is enormous. It's just so comfortable in hand. Watch this, by the way. <laughs> I wish they still made those and I could get one. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that kind of kills... The ergo's a little bit because of that choil. I don't really want to choke up on this. And that's usually when there's a choil. I love to do that. So that's one kind of downfall of this knife for me. Uh, there is, uh, let's get in the carry. So there's a deep carry clip. It is seated into, so it's inset. And then those screws are countersunk. So fantastic job on the clip. It goes almost to the butt end. You have this corner sticking up, but... I mean, there's almost nothing hanging out. Very good carry. I carried it in my back left pocket at all times because this is a right-hand knife, and it has a flipper tab, and it, it's not a very strong detent, right? So I don't want to stick it in my front left because I could accidentally deploy it or something, hit the button, and then, you know, I'm reaching into a pair of scissors. Um, so I carry it in my back left pocket, which is nice because I'm left-handed, obviously, and then it comes out. And I basically have, I don't know how to demonstrate, but it comes out and I basically have it like ready to go. 
I really enjoy carrying a right-handed knife in my back left pocket. Um, so that's, you know, that's usually, whether it's a uh, primary knife or secondary knife, it goes back there. doesn't matter how big or small it is. Um, that's not what I, that's not how I determine which pocket things go into. So carry is actually phenomenal on this knife. I mean, it's as good as the Malibu, except it's a little bigger and heavier. So, you know, it loses a little bit compared to the Malibu there, but as, as its own piece, very good in the carry. So that's aesthetics, ergos and carry, right? Cutting. So this boy is a little bit thick behind the edge. Um, and that was kind of something that everybody has talked about. I stropped it when I got it to just kind of see if I could get it to shave hair. And it does shave hair. Not like, you know, it's not whittling hair. Um, but it does go ahead and shave hair just fine. Let me get some paper for you. So here's some paper. I mean, it cuts really well, guys. It's just a little bit thick. It's not like, it doesn't like, the sound of the cut, it, you can just tell. I don't know. The, as you learn, as you cut stuff more and more, you just kind of learn what a thin edge sounds like to a thicker edge. And this is razor sharp and cuts phenomenally. I'm not trying to argue that. It's just a little bit thick. It's probably like 20 thousandths behind the edge to 25 thousandths. But I don't know. It's a big blade, three and a half inches or whatever. Uh, so I don't know. I don't really fault it for having that. I think it slices really well. It it did great with packaging. It did great with tape. Um, you just saw it destroyed this paper. So if paper ever attacks me, I'm good to go with the Mordax. Um you know, I don't know. I hear that argument a lot for this knife that it's a it's a detriment. I don't think so. I, I honestly think this is a very good cutter, and I really enjoy cutting with it. So uh, cutting is really good. That's how I'll leave that. And it's 20 CV steel, so this edge will last forever. I stropped it just to strop it, of course, and um, it's great. So that's cutting sounds. So this knife shines in the sounds category. It is a button lock. You can hear it tings out and then it drops, bounces a couple times and then seats itself. And it is marvelous. The aluminum just echoes everything is fantastic about the sounds the acoustics are phenomenal on this knife guys and of course when you this takes us into action i guess okay so when you when you let it drop i'm pushing the button in and i'm holding it so you see how it here i'll do it left handed so you can see you see how it bounces off i'm letting that happen so like if i just push the button let it fall and let go It'll suck in, and it'll, it won't do the bounce. So watch. You see that? It's kind of like a timing thing. And it's up to you how you want to operate your knife. I really enjoy letting it do the, the bounce. It feels good to me. Um, that's what we want. Drop shut, right? This thing's a guillotine. It bounces off. And... I don't know. I really enjoy that. But a lot of people don't. You can just let go. It'll suck it in and it'll stay put. Um, but you have to let go of the button there. That's all. Not a big deal. So, I don't know. Uh, action in general is so good, guys. When I first got it, I did think the detent was a little wonky. Like, sometimes it felt really strong. Like it was hard to get out. And then other times it would just, like, barely come out. And... I think that was a case of this knife being um, secondhand. I think somebody used it, like flipped it a lot. I think they poured KPL in here or something, and it was just gunk to shit, right? Uh, when I took it apart, it wasn't like super dirty, but I think certain aspects of it were, and that led to that because I took it apart, I put it in the skiff bearings, and this thing has been singing ever since. That detent is dialed to perfection by ProTec. Um, honestly, it's just so good. It's hard to fail. I can fail it. 
But, I mean, the slightest bit of effort, it flies out of there. Um, it's really good. Compared to the Malibu, it's stiffer. But it's a heavier blade, so I think it's... I don't think it's the detent that's doing that. I think it's the um, the blade weight. Because this one's lighter. Man, this Malibu is just so good, guys. <laughs> so good. Um, but anyway, yeah, I noticed... A substantial difference after that disassembly. Um, so I skipped maybe, but I think it was more just cleaning it out. And I will say on the Malibu slash Mordax, any button lock flipper, it seems like adding those aftermarket bearings makes a huge difference. Um, you get much more lateral uh, strength that feel it just feels way more solid and it's just smooth as butter. Um, I'm telling you, it's just a huge upgrade in my opinion. So, um, action on this knife is phenomenal. Button lock. Ugh, I could play with it all day, guys. All day. Uh, so, what do we have left? Carry, action, ergos, aesthetics, sounds, value. Okay, here we go. This knife is $260 new. This knife is $200 new. Why? Why is this knife $60 more than this knife? They both are aluminum frames. They both are 20 CV steel. They both are button locks. They're both made by ProTech. Why? Well, this one's a lot bigger, you say. Maybe that's why. I don't think so. I think it's because drop.com is involved and Ferrum Forge is involved. So let's just look at it this way. Drop.com gets their 30 bucks and Ferrum Forge gets their 30 bucks. And then ProTech, you know, they get whatever. So my point is if this was a ProTech only knife, it would be 200 bucks probably. Um, but because you have those other companies involved, they need to take their cut. And that adds cost. That's why this is 260 bucks. If this was $200, like the Malibu, I think I think it would have blown up as much as the Malibu did. I honestly. People don't want to spend 260. They want to spend 199. <laughs> or 189. That yeah, you know, I see the Malibu go for 189. There's this mental thing that people have. 20 bucks is too much, but 1999, great. It's just weird. It, it, and I fall for it too. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think 260 bucks is, I think it's a little much for this because you're getting 20 CV and aluminum and a button lock. These are all great things. And it's American made. I love that. But I think 215 like I paid, is perfectly fine. 200 bucks like the Malibu. Now we're talking, right? Um, and I think that hurt this knife a little bit. I think they would have sold way more if it had been 200 bucks. Now, granted, they sell them and, um, they come in batches and then they sell again and they are popular. Like they don't last long on knife swap when they come up. So I'm not trying to say this knife was like a failure. It's a huge success, but it's not the Malibu. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I don't know. I think part of that is the price point. So, um, I, I don't think it's a value pickup. I'm fine with paying it, uh, personally, but I don't think it's like this great deal or whatever, you know? So that's value recommendations. This is like the Malibu guys. Um, I think if the Malibu was a little small for you, which it is for a lot of people, this is perfect. It, you know, it's the big brother to the Malibu. Now, I wish it had the same blade shape and handle, but it doesn't. Um, I wish this choil was better. So, you know, that's my biggest issue with this knife is the ergonomics in this forward grip. It's just not comfortable in this choil. And I kind of just wish it wasn't there. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's fantastic. This is a great knife. I can, right hand, right handers with larger hands. I can recommend this like crazy lefties with larger hands. Again, if you're like me and you're okay, 
with the button lock being over here, which I think actually works better than a normal button lock. Um, if you're okay with that and having a righty clip, then yes, I can recommend this. But I'm not going to say every lefty needs to get one because there's plenty of lefties who you know, I won't buy anything that's, you know, it's not lefty or whatever. So I get it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great knife. I'm so glad that I finally picked one up after so long and I've enjoyed my time with it. I think it will stay in my collection. The only way I would, I think I would sell it is if I needed money and cause I really love the Malibu more. I'm, if it was between the two, I would always pick the Malibu. So that's a reason for me to sell it cause it's not going to get carried as much now that the review is over. Right. Doesn't mean it's a bad knife, but, you know, it's just a point where I don't just need knives for to have knives, even though I kind of do. Um, so, but I think I would get a blue one. Like, if I could get a matching one to the Malibu, I would do that. So, if anybody wants to trade me for your blue one, I don't want any of the milling, though. Plain handle blue. Um, I'll trade you for the black if you want. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, guys, that is the uh, Ferrum Forge. Drop.com, ProTech, Mordex. Absolutely cool knife. Appreciate you guys listening to me rant and rave as usual. I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.